here at the Kukul Farm uh, during our 11-day course in Bamboo U. And here we are with Jet Long from Australia helping us here as facilitator in our course. How are you, Jet? So good. Great to be here. It's a little bit rainy, drizzling, but it's been very good to that Jet has been working with the participant that is right behind us. Yes. So before we jump and start talking about this project, tell us a little bit about you, about your um, professional work, how you get into bamboo, and, um, and yeah, let us know a little bit about that. Awesome. So my name is Jed Long. Uh, I'm a co-founder of Cave Urban. Uh, we're uh, an architecture practice based in Australia and now also here in Bali. And we've been working with bamboo for more than 12 years, I would say. Uh, when we first started out, we were really interested in trying to look at, I guess, what vernacular architecture looks like in contemporary mm. design. And we got really attracted to lightweight structures. Yeah. And that took us to bamboo. Mm. Uh, and so years ago, we started doing some workshops. Uh, at that time, we found it quite hard to learn from others. Um, and so the only way that we could learn was to go out and make stuff and mm. do stuff. Uh, and so we were really lucky to work with a bunch of amazing mentors. Uh, and then over the last 10, 12 years, we've been playing and our practice has slowly been emerging and turning into, I guess, what we've got now today. Yeah. Cool. And when was the first time that you came to, to Bamboo U? Uh, I've always been you know, fascinated by, uh -huh. by this place. I think Bali is such a rich place for looking at bamboo. And we came to the green school years ago when they first built it. And mm. that was one of the first encounters that we had with bamboo. Cool. And so from that, we kind of always kept touch. And I, I would say I met Oren maybe in 2016. Mm. And I did a course here, I think around 2018 was the first time I taught. Uh, and then it's just been a pleasure to come back uh, and see all the new structures that are emerging and kind of mm. the way in which I think education with bamboo yeah. is changing. Yeah. And what I love about your work is this sense of community, is this sense of um, you don't need to have like all the skills mm. uh, to put hands on and work with a very humble material and just bamboo splits. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about your uh, previous works um, mm. that also uh, a little bit about that. It's what we're doing. Here. Yes. So uh, a great mentor of ours was a Taiwanese artist called Weng Wenqi. And when she I think is a very special bamboo artist because he really, in a lot of ways, I believe, pioneered this style mm. of weaving, this kind of random weave and blowing up ideas around basketry to the size of a building. And what we love about it is that it's so accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, you can make these giant structures in relatively quick periods of time. So, for instance, um, the structure behind us, we've been building it for a lot of time, but I was counting and it's less than eight hours. Less than actually. eight hours. Okay, like, great. So in less really than eight really hours, eight hours yeah. you know, we've got something that's five meters high and I don't know, 20 meters mm -hmm. long. And those types of experiences of working with bamboo where you can take what seems to be a very complex structure and break it down into small repeatable steps mm. uh, that you can then teach to people and then they can form part of that making process, uh, at least for us, is really exciting. Um, and I would say in some ways it's a response to also mm. where we're working. So a lot of our work is in Australia. Um, Australia obviously is very different to Indonesia. Um, we don't have the same bamboo available. We don't have the same knowledge, the same skills, uh, cost of labor, regulations are all very different. Yeah. And so one way that we found that we could, you know, have our own way of working with bamboo has always been around community. Yeah. Um, and how you can work with community so that you invite people to participate in the process. Um, you're ensuring that they're learning as part of that process. And then I think at the end of it, when you have these many hands weaving something, you have this sense of achievement as well when mm. you have this amazing thing built mm -hmm. from people who have never even maybe looked at bamboo before. Hmm. Yeah. Nice. And um, let us know if you have any comments, if you have any question in the chat. Inara is right there ready to type and answer all your questions. So uh, so let us know where you're tuning in, if you have any question, and Inara will be able to answer that. So let's talk a little bit about how we started this project. So uh, Jed was uh, part also of the evening speakers and the evening talks here in Bamboo U, as we are now in day um, seven of the 
11 day bamboo um, bamboo U course. So he taught a lect uh, lecture a talk in the beginning, and then we have two days of workshop. Mm. So the idea it was like okay, we have like this sort of uh, space and uh, sort of like a tunnel mm. that we have passion fruit growing. Yep. And they were like, why don't we do like a big thing, a big uh, structure, so the passion fruit can continue growing. And that was like the original idea that was sort of like the brief. Mm -hmm. And that's how we uh, started working. Tell us a, a little bit more about it. Yeah, so um, actually at the start of this year, we did a work for Sydney Festival at the Museum of Contemporary Art. And Juan Pablo, who is another um, founder of Cave Urban, um, designed this really beautiful tunnel that we were all creating together. and. I think part of the talk that I was giving the other night was talking about this process of building that tunnel yeah. and how what can seem like quite an organic form is based upon some kind of very geometric foundations. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what we were wanting to do here was invite the participants of Bamboo U to kind of be able to reflect on that type of process where we can inscribe arcs into the ground but then also trying to encourage them to also participate in the design. Yeah. So this was a very organic build, we could call it. Mm. Uh, we had a kind of base concept that we had spoken about, mm -hmm. and then it was all about coming to the site and involving the 20 participants who were yeah. all part of this uh, with kind of talking them through the different steps and also encouraging them to yeah. have their own input into this design mm -hmm. process, which mm -hmm. has been uh, pretty dynamic. Yeah, uh, but it's really blown me away. What a great job they've all done. Yeah, um, I'm impressed about, as I said, like it's just eight hours mm. uh, with just a 30 minutes introduction of what we are going to do. Uh, around 15 people here. Or mm. Did you count how many? Uh, were? There was about 20 about at certain 20. point. So 15 to 20, depending on. Yeah. So 20 people working here. Very excited. Yeah. Yesterday was super sunny. Today was raining. <laughs> And, and yeah, it was very interesting to see that based on the idea that we were doing uh, some arches and then weaving uh, the material, they really uh, understand how bamboo works yeah. by doing. So that's something very important that we like to share once we're doing bamboo U courses online and in person, is that once you start taking the material with your hands, bending it, feeling the strength, but also how weak it mm -hmm. can be, like the possibilities that it brings, to, to be able to build something like this and also how fast and how and that kind of like reward when you see something uh, already built after eight hours yeah. it's something super cool to see and be part of totally and uh, I think part of the design process with bamboo is very interesting because uh, obviously model making is super important uh, for this project, we were also trying to simultaneously create the building in rhinoceros in rhino mm -hmm. and um, the interplay between like digital modeling where you can create these very smooth sweeps mm -hmm. uh, and forms and then the reality of what bamboo can and can't do yeah. was a really interesting thing to talk about because it's one thing to design curvilinear forms but you really have to understand how a material behaves yeah uh, and that's why i love bamboo because you can get hands on and what we were doing were we were starting with these different arches and we were looking at each arch and how you could build them in different ways uh -huh. and, and bending them. And we wanted to make a very tall and slender structure. So the arch was quite a tight yeah. curvature. So certain ways of bending, it was breaking. And I think a lot of the participants were really reflecting upon how you wouldn't know that until you actually held yes. the bamboo. Yeah, yeah. And so then we were breaking stuff. And in breaking stuff, you learn lessons. And then we found a particular way of doing the arch. Yeah. Uh, and then we could repeat that. Yeah. But I think so much of designing with bamboo really comes back to understanding how it feels and, and the way it works. Yeah. Yeah. And also the important thing to, to see is that even though you have a frame, mm. I mean, there's many ways to do arches. There's many ways to bend the bamboo. And one of them is like just by uh, putting some sticks in mm. the ground and bending that uh, material. But it's very interesting to see like with the same frame, some of the splits and some of the pieces will break and so, um, some others will never uh, break. Yeah. So it really depends on how you manage the, the bamboo, how thick is the wall, uh, where you, uh, you are bending, you might have a knot and then that part will be very strong that is very difficult to bend. Yeah. 
and that's also something very nice to see how natural and how different are all the pieces uh, in bamboo. Totally. And also, I would say um, the species as well. So yeah. in Australia, we often work with moso or madake, mm. philistachys, uh, bamboos that are running. And we find that often we're harvesting them and then we're, we're working with mm. them green because a lot of our work is temporary. Huh. Uh, and so when you work with green bamboo, you can really bend it. Yes. Whereas here we were working with, I'm assuming this is Asper. Yeah. Uh, and the Asper was dried, it was treated, it was designed to last. Yeah. And in doing that treatment process and drying it, it, it loses some of, um, yeah. you know, it, it's no longer as flexible. Mm -hmm. It still can bend a lot, but mm -hmm. you really kind of yeah. realize what the limitations are. Uh -huh. And then you might work with Guadua and find that, again, it's completely different. Oh, and, yeah. mm -hmm. and so I think not only, yeah, there's firstly, there's difference within species. Uh -huh. But then actually, as you're saying, like even depending upon an individual split, yes. where, where a node is, how thick it is, uh -huh. uh, makes it ha all kind of comes into play about yeah. how flexible or what you can do with those things. And I love to, um, to face those challenges. Yeah. Because another challenge, for example, the length of each bamboo split. So we were working with some four meters long, with some three meters long, some others are two meters and a half long. So also that will constrain the way that you bend. Mm -hmm. Of course, a smaller, shorter uh, piece of bamboo will bend less. Uh, whereas uh, four meters long, you're able to put it like from the ground and then bring that split almost uh, mm. to the other side of the of the arch yeah so a smaller split will be like uh, very difficult to to bend totally and i think this is where again like it's really interesting having people actually make it yeah um because you a lot of people i think probably haven't made something before with bamboo mm -hmm. and so you you see them you know putting in one type of piece and trying to bend it and, and getting really frustrated when it breaks yeah. But like, you know, re realizing that actually, yeah, you need that length uh -huh. to get those curvatures. Whereas when yeah. you start to insert small pieces into, you know, a structure like this, it actually, it's quite a hard material to work with because it deforms the structure, yeah. it changes the way. So starting with what your material is and what that material can do, uh -huh. I think is a really critical part of design because mm. uh, so often we've designed buildings or bamboo structures and then arrived and found that the bamboo behaves in a certain way yeah. that is different to what we expect. And so you have to really follow um, the material, which I find is such a unique thing uh, in design because mm -hmm. so often as architects or artists or designers or whatever, uh, you specify something and you expect that thing to, to do that. Yeah. Whereas I think you have to learn a bit of humility when you design with bamboo and respond <laughs> to what the material can do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's very, very true um, because you can get like very frustrated. You can uh, have like this control freakness to bend all the, all the pieces. Mm. And then you will realize that maybe by just rotating a little bit or just moving a little bit the piece, it will bend uh, better. So, yeah. I mean, there's many ways that people that are working here at Bamboo U uh, during the course, they realized just by playing with the material. Yeah. We've done a grid shell in the field of green school. They've done some scale models and they start understanding yeah. the material. So that's the only way to see and to understand how bamboo works, how it behaves. If you want to sand it more, if you want to thin uh, the bamboo, if we had some pieces of bamboo with half of, yeah. of the skin, yeah. meaning that it was a little bit of plant, yeah. so that's more flexible yeah. and that kind of things. So, so in this project, walk us, walk us through um, like the process. Mm. You started with some uh, pieces in the floor, then the arches, walk us through that in detail. So I think we started with like, I guess a concept sketch mm -hmm. um, and uh, we took that sketch and we came to the site and we started to describe out two lines on the ground with basically this is a tunnel. Mm. So we wanted to define the shape of the structure yeah. in plan, so mm -hmm. to speak. Uh, and then um, we were inviting people to look at what the proportion of the structure could be. So depending on what size of arch we made, that would kind of deform uh, the scale and shape. Uh -huh. So I kind of just encouraged everyone to make some arches. Mm -hmm. And then we took those arches and we placed it on the site and we, we moved them to the different shapes of the plan. Mm -hmm. And we started to look at it in three dimensions. And 
a way that I think we often speak about how we like to form these types of um, tunnels and shapes is that it's kind of like sketching in space. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's like drawing, but in three dimensions. And mm -hmm. so we started to kind of mock up a bit of a sketch where we, we, we were getting a shape and you had the arches at varying heights that could create, create a kind of smooth flow. Uh -huh. But usually by eye, uh, but you'll find that, you know, as you walk around the structure, because, you know, it's different yeah. angles, um, that shape changes. So the beauty of working with the bamboo in this way is that we're tying everything together with knots, uh -huh. um, very loose knots, so that we can adjust things. Mm -hmm. And because we were working with smaller splits of bamboo, often an arch was made out of multiple pieces. Yeah. And so if we found that we had to shorten or lengthen the arch, we could just release some of those pieces and telescope yeah. it out mm -hmm. <laughs> and or mm -hmm. or similarly cut it off and make it a bit smaller yeah and so there was actually a real kind of editing process in like as we built in situ mm -hmm. uh that allowed us to kind of keep playing with the form um until visually it looked good yeah. and then once we were happy with the shape of it uh we we then started to introduce um some i guess some cross elements uh, which I guess is where we're kind of starting to talk about these idea of grid shell structures. Mm -hmm. um, so we had the arches and then we were bringing in splits at 45 degrees. Uh, originally, we actually, we were going to do it as a very geometric form, mm. uh, but the participants really wanted to learn about the kind of random weave uh -huh. that so often that we use. So we, we changed that. So if mm. it was a, a regular form, you would have been following a very similar angle and you would have had like maybe some sort of Dimension, way to yeah. exactly mm -hmm. setting it out. Whereas when we do the random form, um, we want to make sure that actually that none of the lines are following the same direction. Cool. Yeah. So, so you might be moving things in certain directions, but every single one you want to be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, so that visually when you look at it, you're not seeing um, a kind of a structure on the underside of, um, of the shape. Yeah. And so then people started to add. And what would happen is as we added some, the, the structure would start to deform, it might twist, hmm. people might be forcing the bamboo to uh -huh, yeah. curve in the wrong way uh -huh. um, or it, not quite get the right line. And so it was really critical that you would have people 